interesting job. And where are you at on your defensive coordinator search at this time? Yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I would say that I'm kind of split on it, right? You know, I'm super excited and happy and proud um, for Brent and his family. And I think he's a great at Virginia Tech and this is the type of opportunity that we talked about for 12 years he turned down a bunch of opportunities waiting for the right one and and this was the right one so um you know I couldn't be happier for him and I think it's a great fit and a tremendous opportunity on the other hand of it um you know you talk about you know a significant loss uh, personally and professionally Brent's one of my closest friends We've been together for 12 years, um, been through a lot together. Um, and, um, you know, obviously, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be difficult to replace. Um, you know, and then in the process of, um, trying to find coordinators, um, you know, uh, I'm working on that at the same time of, of recruiting, you know, I'm on the road right now I'm with, uh, Ty Howell and, Taylor Stubblefield and Coach Yursich. We just finished our second home visit. We're on our third, on the way to our third home visit right now. Um, and then I'm also making calls and taking calls uh, from people and about people uh, for the for the coordinator position. Uh, I'd like to try to get it done as soon as possible, um, but but I want to make sure that we also get get the right person, and that takes time. And then the other challenge is with as many jobs that are open right now, um, you know, a lot of people are, are, are fighting for the same, for the same guys. Uh, so there's a lot of competition out there from that perspective as well. So, um, um, that, that's kind of where we're at. We had practice, uh, early this morning and then, uh, got on the road and recruiting and, and trying to kind of balance it all. And then obviously, you know, getting ready for the bowl game. Um, you know, and, and how we're going to handle that, uh, you know, being down with some staff members. Mark Brennan, then Audrey Snyder. Hey, James, thank you for your time. You too, Mark. Hey, uh, have you appointed an interim uh, defensive coordinator, and how seriously are you taking a look at the guys who have been on your staff? Obviously, Terry Smith is somebody who's been with you a long time. Thank you. Yeah, so um, a couple things. Obviously, you know, we have a co-defensive coordinator, um, you know, like we have in the past with, with Coach Poindexter, um, and everybody's, uh, you know, everybody is, is, is being considered. Um, every situation is being considered. Uh, guys that have been on our staff, guys that are outside of our staff, um, guys that are part of the tree, guys that are outside of our tree. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I, I do want to do is, is make sure that we stay um, with a similar scheme because I think that's important to our current players and our current roster, um, you know, to make sure that they feel like they're a fit. You know, we've recruited, you know, we've recruited for this, this fit um, with our current roster and then also the guys coming in. So that was something that was important to everybody and, and something that just makes sense for Penn State long term. Um, you know, obviously the person that's gonna come in is gonna be able to put their stamp on it, but uh from a structure standpoint, you know, we'll be we'll be similar. Audrey Snyder, then Rich Scarcella. Hey James, good evening. Hey Audrey, you too. Thanks. Uh, I wanted to ask what traits you're looking for in your next DC. Um, and you just mentioned being down some staff members. Um, what do you mean by that? Do you anticipate making changes or? No, uh, whenever, whenever you're, it's this time of year, there's always uh, people that have opportunities and, and options. Um, then obviously, you know, when you lose people from your head coaching opportunities, Obviously, the people that they know um, are part of your current staff, so you know that becomes an even you know even stronger challenge because they have you know intimate, personal, and professional relationships with people on the staff. So, um, you know, traits. I think I've already uh, kind of discussed that just in, in the last uh, in the last question about what we're looking for with somebody with a similar philosophy and structure that we've we've already done. 
um, but obviously be able to put their own stamp on it. Um, you know, but somebody that, you know, is going to be the head coach of the defense and be able to handle that side of the ball. And is also going to be a resource for me that we can collaborate together and, uh, you know, continue to build the defense, uh, to put us in the best position to, to win at the highest level. Rich Scarcella, and then we will go to Mike Gross. And just a reminder, use the raise hand feature if you are looking to ask a question. Hi, James. How are you? Good, Rich. How are you, buddy? I'm all right, thanks. James, have any of the players uh, let you know that if they're opting out of the bowl and have any of the players who can come back, have you had those discussions with them? And are you ready to say if, 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 uh, if uh, tell us about any of those decisions? Yeah, we'll handle that like we always have. Um, you know, I, I don't make announcements uh, for players in, in their situations. Um, we've typically done that at the bowl site or or we've worked with players that are going to put something out, um, you know, uh, through social media. We, we try to make sure that all those things are coordinated. Um, but, but, yeah, I don't I don't make announcements like that, uh, you know, for players. I, I don't think that's that's my place. But there is obviously ongoing conversations um, with all the guys about about you know their futures and and what it looks like and 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 where we're going and how we're doing it and and who will be involved in that process. So, um, but it'll be it'll be very similar to how it's been um, you know for the last eight years. Mike Gross and then Bob Holt. Hi, James. Good evening. Hey, Mike. You too, buddy. Uh, uh, um. For in the run up to this, there was a, a lot of talk about other bowl games than the Outback Bowl, and for whatever that's worth. Were you surprised that this was the particular spot that you ended up in? No, I, you know, for me, I don't really um, spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, it's not anything that, that we have control over. Um, the bowls pick what they perceived to be the most attractive, um, you know, teams, um, and they have a pecking order. So I've, I've been spending my time, you know, um, you know, recruiting, uh, spending my time on, you know, bowl practices, spend my time on trying to hire a defensive coordinator, um, and trying to spend a few hours, you know, with, with my family. I got a, a few hours on Saturday, which was great. We had practice early Sunday mornings, had staff meeting early, early, early this morning, and then been on the road recruiting. So I try to spend as little of my energy as possible on things that are outside of my control um, and bowl site uh, selections um, opportunities is, is really, is really you know, one of those things. We're going to go to Bob Holt from the Arkansas uh Gazette, uh, Democrat Gazette, and then we'll go to Taylor, Tyler Donahue. Yeah, it's, it's not, not political or anything. Uh, hey, James, <laughs> how, how you doing? Um, you know, the last time you played yeah, in, in 2010, 2011, they were pretty good, and then they kind of went through a decade of wandering in the wilderness, and now, now they're pretty good again. I was wondering just what your initial thoughts are on in playing Arkansas, and maybe from afar if you've uh, seen what, what Sam Pittman's done with the program in a pretty short period of time. Yeah, haven't haven't had a chance obviously to study him yet, but um, I got a ton of respect for Sam. I've known him for for a long time, um, you know, and obviously guys on the staff and and the university as well, um, you know. So you know, I've been able to catch a few games or scores on TVs and things uh, on TV and things like that, um, but I haven't really been able to dive into them. But got a ton of respect for that conference. Obviously, I know it well. Um, and got a ton of respect for what Sam's been able to do in a, in a short period of time. You know, I know he's done a really good job of embracing uh, what Arkansas is and what Arkansas stands for. And it seems like the community and university has done the same thing with him and, you know, brought a hard nosed, tough, um, positive energy and, um, you know, is doing, doing some really nice things. So I'm happy for Sam and I'm happy for the University of Arkansas. Tyler Donahue, then Dave Melandra. Hey, good evening, James. Hey, Tyler. 
Um, Sean Clifford, um, you know, coming up on his 33rd start with you guys, played so much football. I'm wondering, do you, Mike Yurcich, Sean and his family have a grasp on what happens beyond the Outback Bowl yet? Or is that still an ongoing conversation? And, you know, how different is this considering that bonus eligibility popped up late in his career here? Yeah, kind of like the question that was already asked. Um, so, guys, futures and things like that. Um, obviously, there's conversations that I'm having with them and their parents uh, and with their position coaches um, about you know what the opportunities are, what the options are, what makes the most sense for them and for us. Um, and and then you know when the time is appropriate. Um, you know, those decisions will be announced, you know, by the players. Um, I, I don't think that's my place. We've never done that in my eight years here, but obviously there are conversations that are happening uh, with all of these guys. And, and obviously in college football, college football looks very different now than it did five years ago and 10 years ago. Um, so these conversations are ongoing uh, we started them during the bye week. Uh, we had kind of preliminary conversations with the guys by position uh, during the bye week, and then obviously as the season you know got closer towards the end, you know we had some some more of those conversations. Go to Dave Melandra Jr. and then uh, we'll have John Sauber's question. Hey, Coach, got a question for you. Um, hey, Dave. Looking back at the regular season, how do you think your players handled all the distractions about the reports about you being linked to other coaching jobs and now knowing you're going to be at Penn State for the next 10 years? Yeah, obviously, we talked about this a lot during, during the season. Um, you know, I had, you know, ongoing conversations with our you know, leadership council and the guys. They were very informed the whole way what was going on and and so did our recruits um and i think for the most part you know we handled it well obviously you know you'd prefer uh that there's no distraction whatsoever um you can't control it you know uh completely and entirely obviously a 10-year contract helps with that moving forward um you know and we probably could have tied it up uh, a lot, a lot sooner. Uh, we probably could have tied things up a lot sooner, but it's just kind of the way the process played itself out. Um, so, you know, what I tried to do is focus on the things that we could control and and try to uh, focus on the the task at hand and the opponent that we were playing that week and, and recruiting. And you know, to me, um, you know, uh, the things within our building we did control. The things outside of our building. Uh, is, is difficult to do, obviously, with, with social media and all the different media outlets that are out there. Um, you know, we did it, we did the best we could under the circumstances. John Sauber is currently covering the men's basketball game, so he texted his question in uh, and asked, "Is previous play calling experience going to be a priority with the new defensive coordinator hire?" And then we'll go to John Petitionock. Yeah, obviously. Um, you know, previous play calling experience um, is obviously helpful. You know, you really want to be able to kind of study uh, a track record, you know, of success. Um, and and obviously guys that have done it before, it makes it easy to go back and, and study all the metrics uh, and see where guys are, are, see where guys are at, and then how you want to rank them and, and those types of things. Um, so, so that that helps. It's not it's not the the final uh, deciding point, uh, but obviously it helps. John Petitionock and then Ali Barubi. Hey, good evening, James, and wishing you safe travels. You as well, buddy. Hey, James, you mentioned the contract. It's it's been a few weeks now since that's been official. Just curious, what's the feedback you've been getting on the recruiting trail uh, with recruits and their families? And have you heard from anyone else, like even Letterman, especially with you know, just kind of feedback that you've been getting that, that you'd want to share? Yeah, I've gotten great feedback from the Letterman. There, there's a group of Lettermen that have come back and gotten to know the new staff and have, have become very supportive. I think you guys have seen some things from like Brandon Short and, and LeVar and things like that. Guys, guys that have been very supportive, guys that we've been able to get to know and, and build a relationship that have been around our program and and gotten to know us and see how we're doing it. Um, 
Spice Adams, you know, literally, you know, he came to the, uh, you know, he came to the, the, I think it was the Michigan game and then came up into my office the next morning and spent a bunch of time with, with, uh, you know, with me and just talked about coach. I love what you're doing and the winning and those types of things, but it's, it's, it's the other stuff, you know, it's, it's how much you care about the kids the impact that Penn State had on him, the impact that the coaches had on him, you know, and I think that's something that's always resonated with me since I've come back to Penn State is how important, you know, the the entire experience is for for Penn Staters, uh, for our lettermen, you know, for the people in the community, the type of young men we recruit, the families that 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 we uh, that we join with. Um, all those things are important. So the feedback from from the Letterman and things like that have been really good. The recruits, I think there is a a sense of relief. Um, but like I said, they they were all informed the whole way. But obviously, when you're seeing things in the media, and when you also see so many other places and so many coaches say that they're not doing anything, and then they do. Yeah, and obviously it gives you pause. So, so I understand that. So as much as I'm talking to these families and these kids and, and, and explain it to them, uh, what's going on in the process, it, it's, it still makes them feel better, you know, when they see it come out publicly. Allie Berube, and then we'll go to Seth Engel. Hey coach. Um, I jumped on a couple minutes late, so I do apologize that this has already been um, addressed, but obviously last year opting out of a bowl game, not having that whole month of practice, um, but now getting it this year, how important is that obviously just to get, be with your guys more, but to kind of help solidify what things are going to look like next year. Like, do you find that this month really makes a difference when it comes to the next season? Yeah, I think there's value in it. I think whenever you're able to get practices, there's value. I think your point about last year is a good one. I mean, you think about last year, you know, the differences around the country and specifically in our conference with the teams that had um, spring practices and the ones that didn't. I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty interesting when you line up last year's teams and the records that they had if they had spring ball or not. Um, you know, there's, there's a pretty strong correlation between those two things. So I think you can make the same argument with, with bowl practices and opportunities that, that you get this year, um, you know, and, and how you use them and, and, you know, taking care of the vets and making sure that they continue to get better and stay sharp, but still have a good experience and, and an opportunity to get more reps, uh, to the, to the young players, you know, that very similar to what you would do in spring ball and very similar to what you would do during training camp. We will go to Seth Engel and then Greg Pickle. Hi, James. Thanks so much for your time. No problem. Thank you. So you've gone through assistant coaches before and new hires, um, but few you've had as strong of a relationship with as Brent Pry. So how do you trust that new hires will be successful before they actually get a chance to coach in game for your program? Uh, say that again. How do you trust that new hires will be successful before they get a chance to actually coach in game? How do you trust? I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Yeah. Like when you're, when you're meeting with an assistant coach, you know, with, with a potential new hire, you know, what, what certain characteristics lead you to trust them that they're going to take your program to a new level? Yeah, so yeah, obviously it's it's being diligent, right, and doing your homework on what their track record is, is and what the, the data says and then being able to talk to enough people that you know that care about Penn State and care about James Franklin and care about, you know, our players that are you know are going to tell you the truth. Um, about what you're getting and the type of person they are in your building or someone that you've spent a lot of time with or you've been on the staff with before. Um, so you just, you're just doing your homework as much as you possibly can about where they've coached, the success that they've had, um, you know, the, the type of uh, you know, co-worker they're going to be in the office from a, from a culture perspective, and then most importantly, how they're going to treat the kids and how they're going to interact with the kids. Um, our players, you know, that's really important. What type of fit they're going to be in the community as well. Um, 
So you just, you're asking as many questions as you possibly can to people that you know um, are going to give you the real deal. And, and then you're also, you know, want to, want to look at the data and obviously the more boxes that are checked, the better you feel. Um, but to your point, you know, obviously you're never going to truly know, uh, until you start playing the games, you know, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that, that build up to that, but at the end of the day, you know, it's going to come down to the production on Saturdays. We have time for two more questions with coach. Uh, we'll start with Greg Pickle and then finish off with Joey Johnston. Thanks, Chris. James, what is the schedule like over the next couple of weeks here? How many in-home visits do you have left to make? What is the bowl practice schedule as it relates to the players and classes and finals and all that kind of stuff? And can you just walk us through what your next few weeks will be like as a program? Yeah, so we're kind of all over the place. Um, Like I mentioned, I practiced this morning and then uh, had three home visits this, this afternoon, which is three separate dinners and you have to walk in and they say, are you hungry? And you go, yeah. And, and you eat and you eat whatever's there and, and whatever's on your plate. Cause that, that's how I was raised. And we're very appreciative to break bread with all these people. Um, but it's not good for the waistline. Uh, I'll tell you that. And then obviously we have practice this morning. So you're trying to balance those types of things. We have practices that are more, um, you know, more um, suited towards the, the young players that you're trying to develop and get reps uh, early on while you're trying to get, you know, some of the older players to be able to rest and recover. Um, and then obviously, you know, we have practices, you know, on the weekends when we're all off the road together, um, you know, getting ready for the bowl. And then obviously the closer the game gets further in the recruiting period allows us to spend more time back in, in state college and, and focusing on that. The GAs and the analysts are all breaking down the film right now. They've started on that today uh, based on finding out who our opponent is going to be and, and uh, you know, ready for us to start the game planning process. Uh, we got signing day coming up, um, those types of things. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a busy, packed, um, aggressive schedule. Um, we also have moved all of our lifting equipment. Uh, we did this after the last game. We moved all of our equipment out of our weight room into the indoor facility. It's turned out to be a really good situation. We wasn't really sure how that was going to be, um, but that's all gutted. Um, so we can get started on the project, the facility project with the weight room that we have. Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts going on. And then, like I mentioned already, trying to hire a defensive coordinator, and um, and trying to keep as many of my staff, you know, intact as, as possible because it's it's that time of year. And our last question will go to Joey Johnston. Joey, if you can also identify your outlet, that would be terrific. Thank you. Yeah, I'm actually writing for the Outback Bowl down here in Tampa. Uh, James, I wanted to ask you. You've you've hi, been to a number of. You, hi, hi, nice to talk to you, James. You've been to a number of bowl games in your career uh, all over the place. How much of a plus is it to? come to a place like Tampa on New Year's Day. And also, a lot of these bowl games, we've seen these matchups before from time to time. This is one we've never seen, Penn State and Arkansas playing for the first time. How uh, how much does that add to it, that these two programs with some history are playing for the first time? Yeah, I think it's, it's really cool because obviously for as long as Penn State and Arkansas have been playing football, there's not too many things that you can say that's never happened before. So I think, I think that's cool. You know, this is kind of the second SEC opponent we've had this year, which I think was also another first. And I don't think there's been a, I think there was some stat that was put out that week when we played Auburn. There hadn't been a Big Ten versus SEC opponent in season, uh, maybe ever or something like that. Um, obviously being able to go to Tampa, we got players from the state of Florida and specifically from Tampa. I think obviously when, when a lot of people think of bowl games, they think of, of, uh, you know, warm settings. It, it doesn't always play out that way, but you think about being able to go play in, in warm settings and, and be able to have that experience and be able to enjoy that and, and be able to play a great game in a great venue that has tremendous history. So, um, I know our players are really excited about it. I know our coaches and, and staff are really excited. I know my daughters were really excited about it, um, you know, when they found out this afternoon. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to getting down. There's a lot of work that's going to have to go into it before that. And 
And I think we all know college football has changed dramatically. I mean, you look on social media every single day and you, and you see stuff, um, you know, that, 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 that players and that coaches and that, you know, um, schools are having to deal with that's very different than it was 10 years ago. So a lot of different moving parts going on, but I know at, at Penn State and in the last building, we're, we're excited for the opportunity. I look forward to being able to spend some time with Coach Pittman and then have an opportunity to compete, uh, which, which I think is going to be a heck of a game. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Safe travels, and thanks for joining us tonight, everybody. 